talk about the glory of God's presence. And, and I, I, I started the year off by saying, I, I want 2023, and I believe this, and I'm passionate about this, where our church be known as a people who carry the presence of God. I, I want this church to be known as people who carry the presence of Almighty God. And some may say, what does that mean? What does that look like? And, and I've already talked about the furnace. We all carry the furnace, but I, I think some of our pipes are disconnected because we're not revealing um, the glory that we should be experiencing or translating or transmitting to the world around us. And so what we're going to look at this morning is we're going to look at the glory of God and how when he came down, the atmosphere changed. People were changed. They stopped. Like, as I said last week, you know, Moses is out herding sheep, and all of a sudden he saw a burning, brez, burning bush. And now, it wasn't the burning bush. It was the presence of God in the bush that made him stop and turn towards the bush and encounter a holy God. And, uh, and then we're going to briefly look at how Jesus was the express image of the Father. And in Hebrews 1, 3, it talks about he was the brightness of the glory of of God, and then we're probably going to conclude with uh, First, Second Corinthians chapter three, verse eighteen, is that we're to be changed from glory to glory into the very image of God. So we want to be people who carry the very presence of God, not only from within, but we want it to radiate from our very, very being. So the first week, we looked at the importance of the divine presence of God in our life. Last week, we looked at the presence of God dwelling in a bush. And so if you think that, you know, God can't dwell in you, I'm going to tell you, you're wrong. Before God dwelt in a tabernacle or a temple, he dwelt in a bush. And we talked about that last year. A thorn bush with God's presence is different than every other bush around. And I think we need to be thorn bushes with a radiance of God's presence uh, to the world around us. Uh, I, I, I'll tell you, my prayer all week long was after I preached that message is let the fire of God burn in my life. That when I leave my house, you know, um, that people are going to take note. You know, on Tuesday, it was kind of neat because I, I, I left the house. Uh, we had a flat tire in the car. I had to go get it changed. But, you know, Sandra says, you got to wash the car. It's dirty. And so I... The, the guy that was doing the car wash gave me a free car wash. And I, I like to think, you know, he just got a little taste of God's glory. Yeah, I don't know. But I want to radiate. I, I just want to radiate God's glory wherever I go. So this morning, I'd like to continue on looking at the radiant glory of God's presence in our life. Or some would say the Shekinah glory of God. Now, Shekinah you cannot find in, in the Bible, but it's, you know, the derivative Shekinah, which is really... The presence of God manifested in our world in which we live in. Or it is uh, Adonai, which, uh, what's the definition of Adonai there, Teresa, way back there? The glory of God, right? What did you say? The Father. But it is his glory manifesting in our midst. I think this week, um, I've read every Old Testament scripture speaking about God's glory or God's presence manifesting uh, in, in our midst. And... And we're going to look at a few, a couple of incidents where God came down and, and the people could not minister because of the weightiness of God's glory. There's times and places, though, that God would show up and the radiance and his presence in their midst changed the atmosphere of what was taking place. Moses at the bush stopped what he was doing and turned and had a face-to-face -face encounter with God at the burning bush. And I want to talk about these times that God supernaturally showed up and changed the atmosphere of what was going on. Whether it was a burning bush or whether it was at Mount Sinai, the tent of meeting, the tabernacle, or whether it was at the temple, or even at Jesus' birth, it says, the glory of God shone all around them, and they saw the presence of God. A couple of my favorites this week, as I, again, looked at many, many scriptures, was Exodus chapter 40 verses 34 and 35, and it says, and then the cloud covered the tent of the congregation. So God's presence, God showed up in a cloud many times and in a fire. 
But in, as Moses had, had completed the tabernacle, it says that, that the fire of God's presence came or the glory of God came and it filled the temple. That's pretty spectacular. Verse 35 says, And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation because of the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of the Lord filled the temple. How would you like to come to church this morning and, and the presence of God was so thick you had to wait outside? Now, this morning wouldn't be a good example because it was cold. But, you know, I, I, I'll tell you, I, I just, I just, there's a day coming before I retire, folks, that, you know, we're going to come into the glory of God and it's going to be so weighty. It's going to be so weighty we're going to either fall on our face, but we're going to see in this next scripture the only thing that the people could do, they fell on their face and they began to worship him as king of kings and lord of lords. So when God shows up, one of the things you're going to do is you're just going to worship him. You're going to take your eyes off your situations, your circumstances, what you may be going through, and in the weightiness of God's presence, God's going to show up and all you're going to do is worship the king of kings and the lord of lords. Because my Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, it says every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess the lordship of Jesus Christ. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, 1 to 3. After Solomon had prayed a prayer of consecration of the temple, a whole chapter, beautiful prayer. It says in 7, 1 to 3, it says this. Now, when Solomon had ended the praying, the fire came down from heaven. So when Daryl talks about fire in the Old Testament, I mean, God still wants to reveal himself today. So don't, you know, it, Hebrews 13 says God's the same Yesterday, today, and forever. So if we read some illustrations where God showed up in the Old Testament, does God still want to show up? I believe so. And when God shows up, when his presence is in the midst, this week we're going to talk about the glory that is revealed. Two weeks from now, we're going to talk about the blessing that is revealed when he shows up. But this morning, and so... Seven, it says, and Solomon, when he had ended his praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice, and the glory of God filled the house. That just, you know, goosebumps. And the glory of God filled the house. The brightness, the brilliance, the splendor of God came onto that temple, and it filled the house. Let's read on. Chronicles 7, 2 says, And the priest could not enter the house of the Lord because of the glory of the Lord that filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of the lost of Israel saw how the fire came down, so they saw the fire of God fall on the temple, and the glory of God that came upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement, and they worshiped, and they praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, and his mercy endures forever. How many people want to experience that this morning? I tell you what, this is what we're headed for. That, that, and I, 2023, I just believe there's something stirring. And I believe that if we constantly pursue his presence, his glory is going to show up. His provision is going to show up. That which we need is going to show up because I am just not content to tell the world God dwells in me and not have my pipes connected to the, to the furnace of God in me. I want to radiate, folks. I want people to stop me on the side of the road and say, there's a fire in you. There's a fire in you. There's a fire in you. What is it? I want to say it's the presence of God. There's no question in my mind. And again, I've read them all this week. So, you know, I could preach without my notes this morning, but I, I got to stay here because I think I go off in attention. I'm excited about this message, folks, because I believe without a shadow of a doubt, God wants to reveal his glory to us and then through us, did you get that? He wants to reveal his glory to us. So if we don't got it, we have nothing to give. So God first wants to reveal his glory to us so that we can reveal it to the world around us. 
Again, I want to radiate, folks, and I believe it's your heart also, the glory of God, because we, we live in a world, and I've shared this for three weeks in a row, but I mean, Isaiah chapter 60, one and two, it, it, it's meaningful to me. It says, arise, shine, for thy light has come. Who's he talking to? Us. For the glory of the Lord has risen upon us as believers in Jesus Christ. Behold darkness. And Gerald talked about darkness. Darkness will be. Don't be scared of darkness. Because light expels what? Darkness. Don't be afraid. And even if darkness does come after you, you know what? To live is Christ, to die is gain. Yeah, I love my wife, but Jesus is even more precious to me. <laughs> Pay for that one later. <laughs> It says, Behold, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall rise upon us, and his glory shall be seen upon us. And the Gentiles shall cover thy light and kings to the brightness of thy arise. I get excited. They're going to, I don't, you know what? I talk about, you know, the harvest field and going out into the harvest field. But as I read this, it talks about we're going to be so radiant, they're going to come to us. As I said a few weeks ago, one day, Trudeau's going to come through these doors and wonder what we got that he ain't got. It talks about kings are going to come to the very presence of Almighty God in us. So again, my message in three minutes is going to be tapping into the manifest glory of God. We need to tap into the manifest glory of God. For God has said he will fill his house with what? His glory. Where is the house now? Where is God's temple now? It's in us. And Haggai chapter 2, 9 says this, and the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. The glory of the, who's the latter house? We are. So we're going to talk, you know, my time's, but anyway, it, it just, it just, gosh, golly, gee whiz. You know what? If Moses had to put a bag over his house because of the glory that was passing, how much more glorious should we be radiating from our lives? And this is what challenges me. This is what promotes me to get excited about this message. No one, Pastor Boyd, no one's ever asked me to put a bag over my head because of the glory of God. Man, I say I'm not there yet. None of us are there yet. So that's why we need to be pursuing the very presence of Almighty God. We need a hunger because it says, again, when we get to it, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, it says we are changed from glory to glory. How does that happen? When we pursue his presence. You know, if we, and we're going to go to another scripture in uh, Exodus where it says the children of Israel did not, they were afraid of the presence of God and only Moses walked into the thick presence of God's glory and they watched from a distance. Not everybody's going to come. Not everybody's going to go where you go, need to go, or we need to go. But my prayer is that this church this year is going to go into the thick weightiness of his presence, and we're going to be changed by the radical glory, brightness of Almighty God, and we're going to radiate. Because the latter house is going to be brighter than the former house. I'll start reading, then I'll stop. Um, but if the ministry of death and written and engraved in stones was glorious, talking about Moses's, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance. So, I mean, he'd just been up in the mountain for 40 days, 40 nights, and he came back and he was radiating from the very presence. He was in the presence of God. Wayne, do you believe that? Moses was in the presence of God. He came down and he was radiating from the presence of being in the presence of Almighty God. And now it says, if that ministry, so what did he get up there for 40 days? He got the written law. And he says, if that was glorious, that Moses radiated from being in the presence of God, how much more glorious is the new covenant that we have in Jesus Christ? How much more glorious? Yeah, and now we, now will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? For if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. 
If there was glory there, it says the new covenant which we live is much more glorious. Hang on, folks. Even for even what was made glorious had no glory in respect because of the glory that excels. Man, there's some beautiful days ahead. So there may be darkness out there, but I, I just think I'm going to be excited, Nikki. Because I, I, Nikki, I just, just can you imagine that looking at your wife and not being able to look at her because of the brightness of the glory of God in her life? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know where I'm going, right? <laughs> this, yeah, um, so, and, and then 13, I, I read the whole thing this morning. It's, it's really good. Unlike Moses, who had to put a veil over his face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the end of that which was passing over. So he had to put a veil over his face, right? But their minds were blinded, for until the day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil was taken away in Christ. You know, the veil is taken away for those who believe in Jesus Christ. There's no law or a veil that separates us because later on, we'll, we'll skip a few verses. It says that we all with unveiled faces. That means the veil has been removed that we beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same glory or the same image, image from glory to glory just by the spirit of the Lord. The NIV actually says it better, and I'm not, you know, a real big NIV fan, but, you know, I read it, because it, sometimes the King James just doesn't say it well. 18 says this, and we all who with unveiled faces contemplate, so we that have been born again as we contemplate. What does that mean? It's like a cow who chews the cud. We're thinking about it. We're, we're thinking about it over and again. Wait a minute. If Moses' face radiated with the glory of God and that was no glory, where should I be in life? He says, and when you contemplate the Lord's glory, then we are being transformed into his image with an ever-increasing glory. You know, we're going from glory to glory. But if you're not contemplating, if you're not in the presence of God, guess what? You're not being changed. It's those who will come into the very presence of God, behold his brightness, behold his glory, behold and be that expressed image of Christ to the world around us. We are going to be changed from glory to glory. And to be, I mean, to be in the Old New Testament, these are some of the most challenging scriptures in, in, in the Bible for me. And that's simply because if Moses' glory was no glory, I, I some days pray, Lord, I, I would just like a taste of Moses' glory, you know? If the old covenant that was written and engraved in stone had glory, if the old covenant that was referred to as a ministry of death, a ministry of condemnation, a passing glory, a fading glory, that's how the old covenant was, was revealed at us. How much more glory is there in the ministry of the new covenant? that is sealed in the blood of Jesus Christ. This covenant that we live under is referred to as a covenant of life, a covenant of righteousness, a covenant that has eternal glory, a covenant that has unlimited glory. Man, we got a good folks. In Christ, Jesus is, you know, he is our mediator and he's brought us in and ripped away the veil that once separated us from God that we can behold his glory. A new covenant we live in that we can, with unveiled faces, behold the glory of God. Just take that phrase and meditate on it this week. A new covenant where we are to actually be a reflection of the glory of God that is within us. As we are changed. As each one of us are transformed into the image of an ever-increasing glory. So here's my challenge is that Moses radiated from being in the presence of the Lord and that glory was a fading glory or no glory in comparison to the glory under the new covenant. How much more should we not be radiating the glory of God?
That should challenge every one of us this morning. You know, how long have you been saved, Pastor? Long time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it in your eyes, but I'll tell you there's more to come. You know, that's, you know what I'm saying? I don't care how long you've been serving the Lord, and I'm not, not no, any, no condemnation because I believe I see it. I see the joy of the Lord. What I hate is a sourpuss Christian, you know, because <laughs> that, that, that I know they're not, you know, their pipes need to be connected. <laughs> but you know what? I love seeing the, always a smile on someone's face radiating Jesus. We should radiate every single day with the glory of God. As Jesus was the brightness of God's glory, the express image of his person, should not we also be an expression of, of who the Father is? So it says in Hebrews 1, he was an express image. He was a brightness of the Father. And, and, and then we're to be transformed into that very image. Again, as Jesus was the brightness of God's glory, the express image of his person, should we not also, should that not also be our glory, our goal? My time's gone. Um, this morning, we talked about Exodus chapter 20, and uh, it says that the mountain, there was lightning, and there was, there was thunder, and the children of Israel was afraid of God's presence, and they stood off at a distance. And they did not enter in. And in Exodus 20, verse 21, and the people remained at a distance while Moses approached the thick darkness of where God was. So some may ask, why did Moses only radiate and not everybody else? I'll tell you why. Moses had the boldness to walk into that thick crowd of God's presence, and he radiated God's glory because of it. Whereas the people said, you go, you speak for us, because we're too afraid. So, end with this. Here's my question. Where are you standing with God this morning? Content to stand at a distance? Or like Moses, are you willing to walk into that thick cloud of God's presence? Because if you're willing to go with me this year to be people of God's presence, I believe by the end of this year, Maybe even next year, we're just going to radiate. You know, we think we're full now. We're going to meet tonight because, you know, we believe that God's going to pour out his spirit and this church is not big enough. Jack is drawing up some plans and we're just going to believe that God's going to supernaturally provide and we're going to have a big sanctuary because we're going to be the light to the world and they're going to come because of God's glory. Not because I'm a good speaker, not because we have great leadership, but because of God's presence unveiling himself in our minds. Father, I just thank you that, Lord, there would be a stir in each one of our hearts, that we would not be content to be, to be just a bush. But, Lord, with your presence, we can be a burning bush with your glory, with your presence. And so let the fire of God be unveil, unveiled in each one of our lives. Take away the veil that, Lord, the passion in each one of our heart would be to pursue your presence because in your presence is your glory. In your presence is your is your provision. And Lord, as we look at your presence, Lord, let there be a stirring heart to hunger for more. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Hallelujah.